truly is a green metal. If you use as little as 0.1 or 0.2% vanadium content in your steel, you actually increase the strength by 50 to 100%. And that allows you to use 30% less steel in your structure, yet you maintain its integrity. This means you actually are using less iron ore, less energy, even less steel mills, making not only a cost-effective solution, but you're actually saving the environment. As recently as 2005, a simple change in building codes turned China from the world's largest exporter to a net importer, causing a 450% increase in vanadium prices in less than a year. Any new building designed in China must incorporate grade 3 or 4 rebar, both of which require vanadium. This equates to an additional 27,000 metric tons of vanadium per year demand, an increase of about 40%. China truly understands the value of vanadium and they're making it a core part of their new five-year plan. Currently they use about 0.035% vanadium content amongst all their steel. The world average being about 0.05 and the United States using 0.09. So now with China driving forward to increase their use of that world average, it's going to have a tremendous impact on global gold prices. Something's happening in China. China is not just increasing like this, but the percentage of steel that will be produced in the future that is higher quality will go like that. So there's, you're going to need more vanadium and other uh, steel strengtheners in order for them to achieve their objectives. The seemingly subtle change in the building code in China is actually expected to increase the global demand worldwide by up to 40% in already a very tight market. But the need for vanadium reaches far beyond the steel industry. It's also a key piece of the renewable energy movement. Vanadium electrolyte is part of the solution to unleash a massive exponential development in renewable energy. Big problem with renewable energy is wind farms work, but you don't know when the wind's going to blow. So the, the real bottleneck has always been over storage. How do you store electricity in a cost-effective way? So if you produce a lot, you can hang on to it. The electric grid is actually referred to as the world's biggest supply chain without a warehouse. So essentially you're building the grid for peak power. There's a thing called a redox battery. And the redox battery technology has been around for a bit, it's been refined, but it needs vanadium electrolyte in order to work. Essentially these are huge vats of, of vanadium and sulfuric acid. And what's unique about them is they're fully scalable, you can charge discharge instantaneously and do that thousands and thousands of times. So they're going to last over 20 years. From a national security perspective in the United States, they're worried about their grid. They're worried about what happens if part of their grid goes down. The vanadium redox battery resolves those issues. The demand for the mass storage industry could uh, consume up to 100% of the current uh, global vanadium supply. Everybody thinks of vanadium as, as an industrial metal stock, but I know where its future is, and it's as a green tech stock. It's kind of nice when you're involved with a project that the president refers to directly when he talks about vanadium redox batteries and technology that's being developed in the United States in order to achieve those objectives. With political goals driving renewable energy solutions, the widespread adoption of energy storage is clearly at a tipping point and only further emphasizes the need for a reliable domestic supply of vanadium electrolyte to support a key storage technology. Vanadium required in flow batteries for grid-scale energy storage applications as an emerging use could dwarf all other uses combined. Vanadium battery chemistries have even caught the attention of automotive manufacturers as they strive to create a battery-powered solution for their industry. In research, lithium vanadium batteries have been shown to have the greatest energy density, which is critical to range. So a number of car manufacturers are actually working hard to put these batteries in their lines. In fact, in late 2010, a car using lithium vanadium batteries broke the world record by going over 600 kilometers on a single charge. Norma is CEO of Ashlon Energy up in Painesville, uh, and it's a company that provides multi-megawatt energy storage solutions uh, using, and I have no idea what this is, vanadium redox fuel cells. That's one of the coolest things I've ever said out loud. Fortunately, the company has some expertise in this area. The inventor of the vanadium redox battery, Dr. Maria Skylas Kazakos, is Professor Emeritus at the University of New South Wales and a key member of the company's advisory committee. 
we saw the work that was being done by NASA. NASA had been working on the iron chromium redox flow battery, so the concept looked very, very interesting. You just have big tanks of solutions and you just pump these around and generate electricity as you need it just from the reaction. Um, but the problem with the iron chromium battery was that um, when you have two solutions pumping through a cell stack and they're separated by a membrane, no membrane can, can, is 100% efficient. So eventually you'll get the solutions mixing through the membrane. If you've got two different solutions, two different elements across the membrane, on either side of the membrane, eventually you'll end up with two mixed solutions. So we saw, okay, the, the only way to overcome that problem is to use the same element in both half cells. The vanadium redox battery, or VRB for short, is a type of flow battery. There are two tanks of solution, one positive, one negative, with one or more cell stacks between them. The cell stack functions like the engine of the battery. A positive electrolyte solution is pumped from a tank on one side of the battery through the cell stack, while a negative electrolyte solution is pumped from a tank on the other side of the battery. A thin membrane in the cell stack keeps the two solutions from mixing together. When the battery is being charged, the vanadium 4 plus ions in the uncharged positive electrolyte give up an electron. The electrons travel up the current collector and out from the positive half of the cell stack. They then enter the current collector of the negative half of the cell stack and jump onto the vanadium 3 plus ions in the uncharged negative electrolyte, converting it into a vanadium 2 plus solution. The addition or subtraction of electrons causes the solutions to change color. When the battery is discharged, the opposite process takes place. Dr. Skylas Kazakis' involvement is a clear indicator of the significant role that the lac doré and INT deposits can play in the development of the VRB and other green technology.